Welcome back to another video guys. Wanted to share a few things before we get into today's video. Um, first off, just wrapped up um, the podcast with the guys over at Hunter. Um, I'll leave a link to that down in the description if you want to check it out. Pretty in-depth podcast going through the process of doing a timber sale and I think you guys will enjoy that. Um, next announcement is we're officially partnering up with Ben Rising of Whitetail Edge to provide a much more in-depth look at your property and we're going to be doing actual um, you know tree stand placements, you know food plot placements, access, all that stuff. We're going to be um, able to do that as, as well as do the, the timber side of things then if you actually need a harvest on your property. So I'm excited about working with Ben and the expertise that he has in that area of this industry. So let's get into today's video. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with the 80-20 principle and that is that 20% of your input equates to 80% of your results and you know this this works in a lot of different areas but I think it also works here on whitetail property management. Um, so a lot of people are obsessed with the 80% of work that equates to very minute changes in your property. So, you know, you can, I would throw, um, you know, tree plantings, uh, hinge cuts, and, uh, you know, different types of products you're using, um, you know, and even, even throwing food plots into that. Um, when is the last time that you, you know, changed out what you planted in your food plot and that's made a huge difference? You know, drastically changed the way your property hunts and the amount of deer you're seeing. It doesn't. All these little things that people are obsessed with um, do help, but it's marginal. So I prefer to first look at that 20% input that's going to give you 80% of the results. And I believe the two things that make up that 20% are first getting a actual you know, amount of cover on your property. And second of all is access and the way you hunt. So let's look at those two things and hopefully we can, you know, help you guys create an overall better property that is actually going to change the way it hunts and actually see mature deer, you know, in the following years. So first off, let's look at a thicker property, uh, more cover, more of a browse in your property. Now I do come across properties that already have this in place. You know, a timber harvest is not necessary. And you know, I, I've run into a lot of those actually, that you already have that base of cover done. Now all you have left is your access. And then you can begin to focus on the 20%. But I do run into a lot of properties that that's not the case. They have big, you know, open timber, mature timber, you know, big, you know, canopy type stuff. Not a lot of undergrowth, not a lot of brush, not a lot of browse, um, not good bedding cover. Um, and what ends up happening is when you try and hunt that property, these deer are going to be able to, for one, see you access from a long ways off. Um, second of all, you don't have browse to hold deer throughout the day. You know, it's up to 30, 40, I think at the most, maybe 50% of a deer's diet is browse. So if you do not have that on your property, um, you're going to struggle to see daylight activity because that's what most of these deer are eating throughout the day. So how do we accomplish that? And that comes down to if you have mature timber, you straight up need to have a timber harvest done. Now there are, there are good and bad ways to do a timber harvest. You know, you can go in and just do level it all, essentially do a clear cut on your property. You're going to have plenty of browse, but it's also going to be incredibly difficult to hunt and you're also just creating another monoculture at that point. Um, and you don't have, because the deer ultimately want edge, and so by doing that, you are creating your property as a center of a larger scheme. I think people get caught up in the deer are just gonna be using my property, but if you start looking at your property in the scope around all the properties around you, you not only want that one to stand out differently, you want inside of that property to have diversity. Um, because if, if your property does not have diversity inside of it, and it's just a monoculture of thick, then your property is just the diversity in 500 or 1,000 acres, if that makes sense. So you want diversity inside of your property as well. And you know, the way we accomplish that is overall, you want more browse, we'll do you know, a selective harvest. And then on top of that, we'll do little clear cut pockets. 
and you know you want good access um, and that leads me to the second point is the access it comes down to if you're busting deer getting in and out of your stand you're going to struggle to have deer staying on your property and seeing success uh, I think the number one thing that I saw you know when I began to change the way I hunt um, is when I began to see results and that is you know accessing not only on your borders because I think this is another thing I see is people um, mistake these imaginary boundaries as somehow a deer won't cross them and like you may actually have a deer that you're hunting that is not always on your property and it's going to be tough to have a deer always on your property no matter how good it is if you have 40 acres it's going to be tough to keep that deer on your property all the time you may spend a lot of time there but being aware of where he is at if you are ultimately blowing scent into where he is at whether that's on the neighbors or not you're gonna have problems an example of this I had a deer that I hunted last year he spent a lot of time on my property but he did shift at one point mid-season he began to bed just off the property to the south of me I didn't catch on to that and I was accessing from the south uh, property line and hunting it on a north wind and blowing my wind to the south and yeah I was blowing my wind off of my property onto the neighbors but that deer was not coming through my property then to get back into the bedding area because I was blowing my wind down into him. And so that's something you need to be aware of is understanding where the deer you are hunting is actually spending the most time and yes, do everything you can to make your property where that is and you can greatly improve the amount of deer that stay on your property but ultimately a deer is a wild animal. Your property line means nothing to him. And so if you can understand that and create access to where you're minimizing the amount of deer that you're spooking going in and out that plays a dramatic role in the amount of deer you're seeing. Now, after you have those two things taken care of, then you can begin to do some of the other things. So my property is 55 acres, and I think probably seven of that is tillable. Um, up to this point, there has been no food on that property. This will be the first year I add in food, and so I've hunted this property for five years now. We harvested the timber on year one, and it's just been a continual improvement of the property and have had more and more deer staying on that property throughout the five years. And a lot of that is down to the browse that's on that property. And I'm still having deer and having tremendous success and, and you know daylight sightings of bucks, mature deer, on that property, even without food. And so that's why I put that food into you know the second category, because ultimately I think browse is the heaviest form of food, and that's where these deer are spending the most of their time. Um, I do have egg around me, so that's where they often will end up at night then. Um, but now that I have that base down, I've figured out the best way to access this property. Now I'm adding in other layers. I'm adding in food. You know, I've, I've done some tree plantings. I have, you know, I'll be adding water holes. All this stuff is great, great to improve. But if you are not ultimately getting that base, that 20% input, 80% output first, um, you're going to struggle and you'll, you'll end up having deer bedding off your property, you'll have a lot of deer being pushed off your property, and you're gonna end up with a nocturnal property. And so, that's what I'm gonna leave with you guys, is stick with the 20%, get that taken care of. Once that's done, and a lot of you already have that done, then you can begin you know, working on these other things, but until that point, don't bother with all these minute little details that often take a ton of time, a lot of money, a lot of resources, to accomplish and you're getting marginal results. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good week.